you want to have the best starting in a new kingdom and conquer your world then you want to check out this guide hello everyone and welcome back to another rise of kingdom video my name is legend ronnie and today i'm gonna help you and i'm gonna give you the best tips and advices in the best guide on how to get the best start in a new kingdom right now what i'm doing is creating a new account in a very old kingdom now why is that is they are called most likely jumper projects kingdom 1130 just picked a very old kingdom and i'm just going to create an account in this kingdom and we're gonna get from there the first thing when you're creating a new account the first thing that you care the most is going to be your civilization that would be the step number one now when you want to start a new kingdom you want to pick a commander that is a peacekeeper and you have britain where you will start with Boudicca, or you can also have byzantium where you can start with belisarius my recommendation is to start with britain she is a very nice peacekeeping commander with a very powerful nuke the reason you have to start with a peacekeeping civilization is because on your main quest on the left, the most sculptures and the most rewards that you, you get for commanders will be for Boudicca. And it will help you out a lot by leveling her up and upgrading her skills, which will help you out throughout the game. At level 10, once you reach City Hall level 10, when you are on your destination kingdom, you will get a civilization change. And you should not use it when you are level 10. You want to wait for a late game and then you can choose your specialization rather you want to be an infantry player or you want to be a calf player then you can choose your final civilization that will help you out throughout the rest of the game we get to the third point and this is why it's all has been done because you are creating a jumper account if you're noticing over here it says beginners teleport you have nine days 23 hours and whatever time left on it teleport to a designated location in the outermost province of current kingdom or other unlocked kingdom the beginner teleport works and helps you teleport to one of the very new kingdoms that are open it has to be nine days or younger meaning that as long as you are city hall level 7 do not exceed city hall level 7 otherwise you cannot teleport you'll be able to use that beginner teleport and you can go to a very new kingdom when you go out when you click on the globe you can go very further down and you can choose one of the very new kingdoms and you teleport but when you should teleport because that is very important you have nine days in this kingdom that you just created your account in that time you can train troops you can develop your account as much as possible but do not exceed city hall level 7 on top of farming barbarians and farming resources there's a couple more extra things you can do as you zoom out and you press on the explore button this is the reason why you start on a very old kingdom or one of the older kingdoms you can explore everything all these camps all these caves villages you can do all this and when you jump to your destination kingdom you will have a jump start this is why they are called jumper accounts you'll have a whole lot of resources you'll have a whole lot of speed ups and most likely a couple of events that you were able to do while you were in this new kingdom if you have friends in the kingdom that you just created they can give you resources and you can jump with even more resources than you can think about and it will help you a lot throughout your journey in your new kingdom going on to the, the step number four it's very important that you try to join a jumper project how you can join a jumper project or what is a jumper project the, a jumper project it is a group of very well coordinated players that are doing this specifically as a number of 100 200 300 or depending how many they are using this jumper project and going all of them in the same time to one of these very new kingdoms developing there and trying to conquer it for them so they can have their own politics and have their own kingdom and start working in kvks and any other future events that will be in the rise of kingdom how you can find one of these jumper project you can check the description of this video and you'll find a link to my discord or you can go into the rise of kingdom discord or if you go onto my discord i have a specific channel where is jumper project and specifically done just for this because there is a lot of players that enjoy 
doing this and at the same time on my channel you'll find a various of a lot more information that will help you develop your account going on to the step number five you have already done your jumping you are at city hall level seven you have a whole lot of, of resources you just went on the new kingdom you have over here which is called the main quest following the main quest is one of the most important things in rise of kingdoms the main quest will help you develop the starting commander which will help you a lot throughout the beginning of the game and it will also help you develop your city hall which is one of the most important buildings in your city trying to progress on city hall all the time this should be your main priority. Step number six, you are in your new kingdom and you want to join an alliance. This is going to be the next step that you want to follow is trying to find a very good alliance. You need to prove yourself to the kingdom and you need to prove yourself to the alliance that you are worthy and by activity. This is very crucial at the beginning in the game and in the beginning in Rise of Kingdoms activity later on once you get to the max city hall level and once everything settled up in your kingdom you're going through first kvk things are going to calm down a little bit but the beginning of the game is very crucial and the activity is very essential going on to the next step you want to make yourself noted into the kingdom how can you get noted in uh, your kingdom one of the best way you can do that is trying to be in one of the top rankings as a free to play that's going to be very hard but there is one place where you can dominate and that would be the resource gathering and going further down is very easy to scroll maybe on the top 100 so being a very active player and farming a lot of resources is going to help you a lot just prove yourself to the kingdom that at least you're doing something you're active and you want to get in one of the best alliances or you want to progress if your alliance is not very active you want to make sure that you keep changing the lines you want to make sure that you're always in a very good alliance because that will help you a lot at the beginning and that will help you develop and progress going on to the next step is going to be your commanders which are the first commanders that you want to work on because you started with peacekeeping commanders that should be your main priority that should be the first commanders that you want to work on Budika and Lohar will be your best friends that you want to work on on the same time you want to work on gatherers this should be the first commanders that you will work on and as a gatherer you have John of Arc but since sculptures right at the beginning will be so crucial maybe you just want to max her gathering skill which is her second skill so it's not going to be something very hard and then you might just want to wait a little bit with the other skills since Budika is going to be your starting commander it will be very easy to max her skill it will most likely be your first commander to obtain an expertise and that will be really great it will help you a lot and the second commander it will be expertise most likely will be lohar i mentioned about lohar but you're probably wondering how are you going to obtain lohar and that is to a special event where you will be able to obtain lohar's buckler and lohar's longbowman these two items drop from the bone necklaces by just killing barbarians you 100 percent guarantee get on each barbarian a bone necklace when you utilize these bone necklaces you have a chance to get one of these two when you use one of these two, you will summon a group of barbarians, which you will be able to rally them. And from those ones, you will be able to unlock Lohar or get more sculptures to upgrade your Lohar. This type of events is something that a lot of players do at the beginning of the kingdom until they max out Lohar. So this is something that you should always do because it will help you a lot to get an expertise commander. As a starting for the gatherers, if you just get them to level 37, it's gonna be the best you can get out of your gatherers. So as a level 27 gatherer, you get the more the better, but at level 37, you get superior tools. That should be your main aim because 25% resource gathering, all kinds of resources will help you a lot. Since your technology is gonna be very low, Alliance technology will be next to nothing. There's no other buffs and there's no other skills that will help you gathering. It's kind of the way to go and trying to get a level 30, 37 gatherers will definitely help you out throughout the game. What peacekeeping commanders help you a lot is killing barbarians or any other barbarian events including forts. The current peacekeeping talents that I have on my Boudicca is with the Kuring Chant. But you don't need all this. You can do a way different talent tree. I'm a max 
tech player is completely different. And since Boudicca will be your highest leveled up commander, most likely you might use her for field battles. Not for a very long time, trust me, you don't want to do that. But as a short term commander, you might use her for that. And this might be a more common talent build that you might use on your Boudicca so you can benefit from the experience and the action points reduction from the peacekeeping while in the same time your march will do some damage on the battlefield having the skill talent tree. Now if you don't need to use Boudicca for that purpose take a way different path with your peacekeeping commanders and you can go more into peacekeeping so you can do more damage and more skill damage to barbarians or you can use it for rallying going with mighty force which gives you more damage going on to the next step once you're done with your peacekeeping commander and once you're done with your gathering commanders you're all set up with this part you're farming very well you're killing barbarians and doing events very well then you want to start working on some of the war commanders my advice is the first two commanders you want to work on is going to be one some two two is going to be pelagius you're already working on some of the peacekeeping like i was mentioning uh, Belisarius, Boudicca, Lohar, you're most likely working on this but as a war commanders these two are the primary ones that you want to work on and this two can be very well used as later on into the game Pelagius and Sansu. Going a little bit further down and talking about some of the legendaries the only legendaries that you should worry about in the beginning regarding upgrading should be Richard once you get his will and the 5-5 Richard will help you a lot throughout the game. If you manage to get that 5-5-1-1 Richard, how you can get that is by keeping him at 1 star, maximizing his primary skills, and after that keeping him at 2nd star, and then maximizing his secondary skill. Once you've done that, you can unlock his other skills and you can start leveling him up. Richard will help you a lot in the beginning of the game, towards the late game as well. He is a real beast. The second commander that you want to work on is going to be YSG. And this is the one commander that you want to maximize his skills. You're probably wondering why is my Richard 5-1-1 but I recommend it 5-5. I took a way different path. For me into the late game I don't really use Richard anymore. I don't need him and I also don't do AOE bar farming. But as a free to play low spender there's something you can do. And that's why a 5-5 Richard it will help you a lot for AOE bar farming. What AOE bar farming is is exactly what commanders like YSG can do. This is the reason is your first commander that you want expertise once you obtain his expertise has a circular shaped area around him so he can damage up to five marchers that are around him meaning that it will be very easy to hit multiple barbarians until he is expertise there's other commanders that will help you with this you have Ethelflaed, which kind of has around half of a circle it also hits five targets so richard and Ethelflaed can also help a lot or Ethelflaed and richard since Ethelflaed is also a peacekeeping commander you have sansu there's various other commanders that have this fun shaping area and you can hit multiple targets that's what aoa bar farming is once you get to a destination kingdom presumingly that you have done the jumper project as i recommend it another tip i can give you is that you can do the camps and the villages you can do them again this is every time you migrate or every time you go to a newer kingdom some of the caves and villages are becoming available again that means that you will be able to collect more rewards and more resources going on to the next step is going to be the expedition this is going to be another place where you want to check in every week you want to try to build and you want to try to do as much as possible from the expedition the reason i'm saying every week is because the expedition becomes harder and harder as you keep progressing through it and you will start needing more troops, you will not you will start needing higher quality troops, you will start needing better commanders, and this is something you'll get throughout the time playing the game. Once you obtain three stars in one of these expeditions, you don't have to do it anymore, you will be able to collect all these rewards automatically. So for example, I'm at the limit of my expedition and every day I just press one button and I collect all these rewards, which in the end is just extra rewards that you will generate daily. Progressing as much as possible, it will help you out throughout your gameplay. Going into the shop of the expedition, your priority should be the commanders you want to work on. You want to prioritize the sculptures. You want to work on Ethelflaed is definitely going to help you at the beginning of the game. She is a legendary. But since you're not generating so many coins from the expedition until 
late game you might want to put a hold on her captures because there's going to be a lot of other priorities that you can get from the shop such as stars which are at a more premium cost right now all the old players are probably sitting on thousands and extra of thousands of Ethelfled sculptures because there's nothing else we can do with her sculptures. Going on to the next step since I already mentioned about trying to get one of the highest ranks regarding gathering and I already told you that you need to gather a lot of resources which will help you out a lot is checking the shop every week for as much speed ups as you can. So for example in the VIP shop every week you can get action points, speed ups, you can get materials and you can get stars. Everything that costs resources, this is something that you should buy. This is the reason why you need to farm as many resources as possible. For example, you go into the query station and you have 40% of resources which just cost you resources. You have speed ups that just cost you resources, not gems. This is everything that I buy every single time. You notice that it says sold out. I only spend resources buying all this. The boost will again help you a lot. So having a lot of boost will help you throughout the gathering. Going further into the speed ups and into the shop, you have various of other events which requires you either to train some troops and unlocking tier 2 troops is not going to be a killer. Trust me, it will help you a lot and you get various rewards. Trying to do any events as much as possible, even if you do it on easy difficulty, trying to acquire as many speed ups as possible, it will help you a lot. Going on to event calendar, there's various other events that will grant you rewards. For example, is this one War Forever that just finished is the Karak, which you should try to finish it even if you do the easy difficulty with your alliance. Going further down, you have Four Siege, you have Clarion Call, you have Seroli. Even if you do the easy difficulty, it will help you. You will get some coins and you will get speed ups. Why advice from the Seroli shop is to buy speed ups. That's something that you need the most in Rise of Kingdoms. So checking the shop and the events will help you out throughout the game. Another tip that I can give you regarding starting on a new kingdom is going to be your troops, how you protect your troops because you are very vulnerable at the beginning, your city hall is very low, you don't have a very good defense on your wall and you cannot work on so many commanders right at the beginning of the game. So most likely you will be very defenseless. There's a couple of options but one of the options you will round out very soon. You have boost, you have shields, but at some point you can run out of shields and you cannot protect your city anymore with shields. A very nice trick that you can do is parking your troops since you will not have that many troops in a flag in your alliance while you're going to sleep. The majority of players when they go to sleep, for example, they just send their gatherers to gather resources overnight so they can get a tiny bit more resources, but will that worth it? To get attack overnight because your kingdom is at the beginning, the polities are not settled up, war can start in any time. Will it worth it to lose all your troops for a couple of more resources throughout the night? I would say that it will be not. Zooming out and pressing on the alliance button on the left up, you want to choose a middle point where no other alliance will be able to reach there very fast. And once you find that point, you want to choose a flag and you can reinforce it with the maximum amount of marches that you have available on your city and you can put all your troops in there. For that reason comes another tip on, on the same point is not using your resources. For example, you notice that there is a lot of resource cards that you can use and you can display a large amount of resources do not use your resource cards because it will not help you at all. You might say, all right, so my city will be very defenseless if I park all my troops. I would prefer to lose resources when you're at the beginning of the game rather than losing your troops because most likely your troops will cost you a lot of speed ups which are more valuable than resources. For that reason, you shouldn't have displayed so many resources. You should try to use them if you can. Another tip regarding that, if you don't have that many troops and you, you don't want to park your troops into your flags, is going to be your hospital. Trying to keep your hospital as the same level as your city hall, that can also help you out throughout the game. So for example, once you reach city hall 21, you have around 48,000 hospital capacity on each hospital and you have a total of four hospitals that could bring you up to 200,000 troops. Now, if that is going to be the amount of troops, the total amount of troops that you have in your city, then you can leave those troops in your city. But if your city gets here, gets zeroed, 
or as is it called being zeroed, you will not lose any of those troops. As long as they are to your hospital capacity, they will go into the hospital, but you will have to heal them after that. If you put them in a flag, like I was just advising you, then your troops will be saved and you don't even need to heal. Most likely your city will burn or the worst thing, you will lose some resources. If you think your city can be defended, that you can leave all your troops. But my advice is until your kingdom politics are settled, you want to make sure you save your troops and you don't lose them for no reason and you protect your troops either with a shield or in a flag. For extra rewards and extra experience at the beginning of the game it's going to be the Sanctum Guardians. This will most likely be one of the best way to obtain experience at the beginning of the game and this is free because they do not cost any action points to kill them. On top of that, they give you runes. Trying to use runes as much as possible, either when you're upgrading buildings, when you're researching, training troops, or even gathering resources or resource production, or various other actions going into the battle, trying to boost your stats or your productions as much as possible. It will help you out throughout the game. Grouping up with your alliance or with your kingdom, it will be the best way to take these guardians so you can maximum profit from this experience as much as possible. Most likely organized kingdoms, they have a certain amount of time for these guardi guardians. Not necessary for the Samtum guardians, but this will be the first guardians that you will be able to kill. Once you get to the higher zones into your kingdom, you'll have access to better guard guardians or better NPCs to kill for more experience. And at that point, it will most likely be different times for those as well. And these ones will become absolute. Like in my kingdom, nobody comes right now to kill this because nobody needs them anymore. But at the beginning, this will be golden for you. They spawn every 12 hours. And higher and better runes in the same starting area the same zone 1 areas you will find on the altar guardians which you notice over here they drop level 3 which is wood production plus 10% where you can get troops defense or various other bonuses that will help you out throughout the game commander experience when you kill guardians or when you kill barbarians and various other runes that will just be very very helpful and trying to benefit as much as possible from everything when you zoom out completely you also have another button which is says barbarian stronghold I noticing that there's two different icons that popped in and that is going to be the barbarian keeps and that is going to be the barbarian camp. Trying to organize with your friends in the alliance if this is going to be too hard for you to kill and going in group and killing this will grant you rewards by just killing them. So for example, you're noticing it says over here potential rewards. You can get various fragments for various blueprints, you can get materials or various other resources and speed ups including gems. Going on to the keeps, you have the same rewards available. You click over here, can be acquired from level one to five barbarian keeps. This is a lot of speed ups, resources, gems that you will definitely need throughout your game. Trying to group up and trying to kill this with your alliance again will help you out once these barbarians are being unlocked in your kingdom. Daily Sunset Canyon Battles, this is just another way how you can obtain even more rewards right at the beginning or once the Sunset Canyon is going to be unlocked into your kingdom. Even if you lose or even if you win by just challenging players and attacking them, you will be able to gain some rewards. So for example, you notice that I lost, but I still got some rewards. And when you win, you just get a couple of extra more rewards in terms of experience. But this will be a little bit for a later game when you want to focus more on winning. Do not forget about your daily objective. This is one of very important steps. You want to acquire a hundred activity points because this will give you a lot of rewards. You get a gold key, you get a crystal key, you get another try in the Sunset Canyon, magic box, five epic commander sculptures, which depends on your city hall. So for example, if you're going to be like city hall 20, you will only get four or city hall 21. But I know for, for a fact that this is dependent by your city hall. Only when I acquired the old 25, I started getting five epic sculptures. Until you reach 100, there's various of other rewards that you get by just completing the activity points and just doing the minimum requirements that it says on the daily objectives. Another tip about a very important building is going to be the Alliance Center. When you click on the information on the Alliance Center, once you reach max level, it says here times you can be helped 30. When you go into the information of the Alliance Center, 
or if you need more information about each and every building this can give you a very decent amount of information about every other building for example if you are city hall 21 you have unlocked the level 21 alliance center and if you build your alliance center to level 21 the times you can be helped is 25. When you go to your alliance and when you press on the help button and you click on this information, it says here, help your allies build, upgrade buildings, research technology and heal troops. Each help action will fill the progress by 1% or a minimum of 1 minute. Now, if you have 25 helps, means that if you want to do research or building or something else that players can help you, it's going to be 1%. But if you want to do the so-called free healing, or how some players call it the free healing, you want to queue up troops enough for the amount of health that you can get. Now, you can go into your technology, onto your alliance, and you will find it on the first one, on the development. It says here, together we'll rise. Speed up time plus 120 seconds. This adds two minutes on each of your help. You have one minute from the help button and you'll have two minutes from the technology. So when you click on this information button, it's not just one minute that you read over here. If you have the technology, it's going to be three minutes. If you have 25 helps available, if you do that times three, you'll find out that it's going to be one hour and 15 minutes. So if you queue up enough troops, in your hospital for one hour and 15 minutes if there is enough players in the alliance active and they will all press help you should instantly get your troops healed that way you can queue up again if the alliance is not so active or if you don't have enough players then you can choose a lesser amount of troops maybe just for one hour and this way you can heal up your troops for free but it says over here there is a limit of a thousand times that you can be helped in a single day if you want to go ahead and invest a little bit you want to be a very low spender into the game you have the growth funds which personally i don't have it anymore because i use it that's a one-time buy but that's one of the best purchases. that should be the first purchase that you want to do in rise of kingdoms it will give you a lot of gems if i'm correct it's over eighty thousand gems in total that you can get from a growth fund once you reach city hall 25 other things that you can buy in rise of kingdom that will help you out on your growth if you want to spend a little is going to be the 30 day gem supply seven day speed up supply is very good but it's entirely up to you how much your budget is going to be regarding this the material supply trying to get this from the beginning again will, can give you a very high advantage at the beginning and towards the late game because you'll be able to acquire a lot of materials throughout the time. Every time you get pop-up bundles, those bundles are amazing, especially when you summon a new commander. That is, again, one of the best buys. Whenever one of the new commanders is being summoned, you get the Ritter of History, which is a $5 bundle and gives you 10 sculptures and various other goodies. After you build your blacksmith, whenever you do various tasks in the blacksmith, you get bundles popping up as well, which are very cheap bundles, gives you various materials and blueprints. That is again one of the best buy bundles. When you combine legendary blueprints, there is a bundle popping up the same as the Ritter of History. To give you an example, once this Pendant of Eternal Night, I have 30 out of 30 and I will combine it, I can guarantee going to get a pop-up bundle, which is the same as the Ritter of History, but this is one is done for materials. And you get it every single time you combine legendary equipment. I do hope that this guy will help you a lot and this will help you complete what you missed into the game. If there is any question, you can always drop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them to you. Until next time, this is your boy Jeroni signing off. Peace out, yo, and take care. See you on the next one and stay safe out there.